Rowdy Banger Pals, Blaine Smith, joining you for another Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly metal review show. Today, I'm talking about the album that you absolutely knew I was going to talk about it. So let's just, let's just play it. Our boy Black Braid is back with Black Braid 2 coming out today, July 7th, and he is still doing it all himself. Independent release, baby. Let's go. Despite only forming in 2022 in the remote Adirondack Mountains, Black Braid already kind of needs no introduction. He went from never having made black metal before to kind of being black metal's shining star i've talked to him for an extended period of time on uh on uh lock horns last year uh he's been interviewed his albums made album of the year lists and this week he was just had a feature in the new york times so um i think people know about black braid let's talk about the album By no fault of his own, Black Braid 1 got stuck under some pretty bright lights pretty quickly. Despite being an independent release with no big record label behind it pushing, it managed to catch on like uh, an analogy that isn't wildfire because holy hell, there's a lot of wildfires right now. It was his first record as both a band and like a man, and it just barely qualified as a full length just kind of stepping outside of that ep zone in terms of time with 29 minutes of black metal and seven minutes of interlude as a result some of the people not on the train sort of questioned if all the praise he was getting was ill-gotten with that in mind this sort of serves as the actual black braid one and i don't know if it was an intentional bit of fuck you to the people saying that or if it's just one of those beautiful coincidences in life but this album clocks in at 59 minutes with seven minutes of interlude 11 months after the release of the previous album which all of those numbers really tell a tale of no no he's good at this it also comes off as a bit of a thank you to those already on the team though because it's sort of just the first record supersized if you're hating nothing on here is going to change your mind uh but as a fan, I am glad about this because realistically, he is uh, one year and six months into his black metal career. So there's absolutely no reason to start making drastic changes to the formula quite yet. Yeah, at this point, I mean, you're just being a dick if you're going to try and pretend this guy can't write a compelling full length black metal record from top to bottom. I mean, he proves it on one song alone on the record. Moss Covered Bones on the Altar of the Moon really does it from every angle. I mean, at its core, it's just got a great tremolo-picked riff. The drumming is both classic black metal as well. It adds a little extra something towards the end to give it a personal stamp. He's got great vocal delivery and delivering the very essential oog in the song. There's that Native American flute uh, used actually throughout the song instead of just an interlude. It's very sparing and it's nice and haunting. And that's before we even get to the fact that this is a compelling track all throughout its 14 minute length runtime. And it also leads into the great start of A Song of Death on the Winds of Dawn. I mean, the album even has great bass on it. John seemingly has no shortage of ideas that he can just crank out at will. The one two punch of tracks five and six alone make kind of the main tent pole of the record. And in that main tent pole, we get almost as much black metal as we got on Black Braid One. Then that doesn't even count the fact that there's four more songs on the record, a Bathory cover, as well as those extra interludes. As a reviewer, I'm always looking for those perk up moments that I talk about because frequently I'm doing two things at a time when I'm listening to an album. You know, I will take some time to sit down and just listen to a record, but after I listen to it a couple times, usually I'm writing or I'm playing video games or something. So when you can steal my attention, it really says a lot. And there's a lot of attention stealing moments. Like, how am I supposed to focus on what I'm doing when this comes up.
one thing John has been very clear about with the Black Braid project is at the end of the day, he's just trying to make black metal that speaks to him. He's not trying to make some massive shift in the genre happen or make some big overarching point. Uh, as a result, the Native American folk elements on the record have been sparingly used still. There has definitely been a more intentional mixing of the styles and a bit more of a turning up of that knob, but it still feels like the ratio could use a bit more to kind of add that final signature sound to it uh, for John to kind of step out of the slight shadow that he's under from bands in the genre doing similar stuff, similar earth-connected black metal, you know, though I certainly will say uh, gradually increasing the flavor in a recipe is a better way to do it than dumping in the whole bag and having to subtract that, leaving me hoping there'll be more in the future is, I mean, the best way to make a mistake. Where I do think he overcorrected a little bit, though, compared to the last one, is in length. It's not that there isn't enough ideas to fill up the space. I mean, there's, like I said, ideas left and right. He has no shortage of them. It's just sometimes he can sit in one a little longer than is necessary. There's also a track, Twilight Hymn of Ancient Blood. It feels a little bit out of place to me. Uh, it certainly shows that, hey, I want a black and thrash project from this guy because he can certainly do that. So maybe let's get him together with uh, with some other some other black and thrash people. They can do a little side project together. That'd be fun, eh? But yeah, it just doesn't quite fit with the vibe of the rest of the album. But again, I mean, if this is the worst your album sounds, uh, you're not doing too badly. back when I reviewed the Spectral Wound record. Where is a new Spectral Wound record at? I could use one of those. I said the issue with playing melodic black metal can be that you lose the intensity and fury of a traditional black metal project and can never quite settle into the vibe of an atmospheric one. Well, black Braid has sort of managed to do it. The, the, the fury and intensity and passion is absolutely there because... Black Parade is almost like a fan-made project, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw the Astartes Project Warhammer fan films that guy made that's better than anything Games Workshop did, but that's sort of what's going on here. I mean, there was just a hole in black metal where he didn't feel anyone was making something that sounded like this, so he just went ahead and did it. He's the driving force behind the project in all aspects. He's pushing it forward. He's the reason it's exploding, so definitely that intensity comes through. Uh, with just, yeah, the sheer amount of passion he has for what he's doing. Then in terms of atmospherics, obviously the atmospherics are one of the strongest parts of the record. Uh, the band is billed as that, though I wouldn't necessarily say I would fully consider this an atmospheric black metal band. But regardless, uh, he has a button. He's got like a fog machine sitting there where he can just generate atmosphere at the push of a button with the folk elements he used. I mean, editor. <laughs> fog on the screen please and then the clip will play like so i'm doing it as well let's go I want to get a little philosophical about reviewing in this conclusion because on my last review, people accused me of being biased, and I wanted to address that because, uh, yes, I am absolutely biased. Every reviewer is biased. The only way you can review art is through bias. It's it's art. It, there's no objective criteria. They didn't score a goal. Like, y you've got to be like, oh, do I like the way this sounds? That's how you judge things. Uh, the reason we had so much passion for the first Black Braid release uh, was just simply that it was a surprise. It came out of nowhere, and it gave a 
a cool emotional response and music is about emotional responses. So uh, this record is better than the previous one, but because we were waiting on it and expecting it, it doesn't quite have the intensity of the emotional response. So there's this weird kind of balancing. Uh, I, I will say everything I'd like him to have delivered on, he delivered on, and I think he can keep delivering to an even higher degree. So there's this kind of weird, like, uh, expectation versus reality, uh, reality versus potential kind of thing here. So I think this is a fantastic record. Uh, I think everyone should buy this record. I think everybody should be supporting this guy, and I think we're going to be hearing about Black Braid for a while. Minor criticisms aside, it's a great time. It's a fantastic record, and I'm absolutely giving giving it four out of five deer skulls. Thus, we come to our shout outs. And if you enjoy the shout outs, there's even more shout outs happening over on our Patreon page. Uh, every month we do a tip sheet where you get bonus records that we just won't have time to talk about on the channel, but definitely think you should buy. So if you need more records, toss us a couple of bucks on the Patreon page and we can keep making content like this and I don't have to sell you a wallet. And if you wonder, where do I find all these records? Uh, I look at every single album coming out one month in the future, every Sunday live on Twitter twitch.tv slash metal comedy at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Come hang out with me. It's a total party. It's a blast. It's the best way to find new music. But without further ado, my four shout outs. Uh, up first, Serpent Corpse, uh, Blood Sabbath on Temple of Mystery. Some fun kind of punky death metal out of Montreal, Quebec. We've got Gateway, Gateway. Galgan Dude on Transcending Obscurity. That's Death Doom that I absolutely love. Definitely heavier Death Doom. Chipang Swada, another independent record. It's some crazy grindcore. I've been kind of vibing some grindcore re le records lately. I'm pretty stoked about that. And last, uh, if you're in the mood for more folk black metal, I mean, you're watching a folk black metal review. Uh, Fen uh, Monuments to Absence on Prophecy Productions also comes out. So, that should be enough. Uh, what did you think? Are you as uh, on the Black Braid train as I am? Are you not? What are you feeling? What are you vibing? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you later. Peace out, gang. Don't.